Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about five different ways you can improve your practice sessions. Who doesn't want to get better faster at their instrument? We all do. There are lots of ways to have good practice sessions. So today we're just going to bring it down to five of them. Now all of these techniques apply to any instrument and these are things that I've learned over the years of playing and these techniques have been passed down to me from my teachers. The practice tool that I probably use more than anything in passage work, meaning if you have a lot of notes that you have to learn, if it's fast, then I break out my metronome. And I actually just use an app on my phone. It works fine. So it's free. Get yourself a metronome. I use my metronome probably like 90% of the time that I'm practicing. It helps me learn what I need to learn under the metronome's time, not under my time, what I'm comfortable with. It forces you to bring up your level of playing so you get better faster. So using a metronome takes some time to get used to. When I first started playing with the metronome, it was tough, so I had to start out simple. The more you do it, the easier it gets, and you start to see the benefits from using it in your practice sessions. It's hard to feel the beat, watch your music, make sure your technique is good at the same time. But in my experience, I have had the most success from trying to do as much as I can at one time. That I'm asking more of myself and you get used to having to do all of these different coordinations at one time, the more you ask yourself to do it. And it improves the quality of practice sessions. It makes your practice sessions much more successful to try to do as much as you can at one time. It decreases the amount of time you actually have to spend practicing if you can do all of these things at one time. But that's just what's worked best for me. I know some people really need to do one thing at a time, and sometimes I do too, but I generally try to do as much as I can at one time. I like to make a game out of it where you wanna start the metronome as slowly as possible. And when I say as slowly as possible, I mean as slowly as you can handle it. Sometimes it's so slow that it's hard to feel a beat. So you don't wanna go that slow. But if you can start it at 40, that's usually a good spot. So I'm using Don't Caprice number five as an example, and I have my metronome set to 40. So I have to fit six notes in one beat. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Okay? Every time you play it twice in a row correctly, you bump up your metronome two clicks. So now we're at 42. And you keep going and you keep going. If you can't play it right two times in a row, then you're not ready to go any faster. So set some goals for yourself. Make a game out of it so that it's fun. I am a really goal-oriented person, so if I have an end goal to meet, that competitive nature kicks in and I like really try hard to meet that goal. So right now, for example, I am working on getting this Caprice all the way up to 104. And right now I'm at 100, but you know what? I started at 40. That's my first helpful practice technique to help you learn these hard passages quicker. I promise you, the more you work with the metronome, the easier it gets, but if you never do it, then it's never gonna get easier for you. Okay, let's get into number two, rhythms. So if you have a passage that's hard, again, a lot of notes, you can metronome it, and you can also use different rhythms. So let's take the same six notes that I played for you before, the first six notes of Don't Caprice number five. So there's a lot of different rhythms that you can use. I start out with long, short, long, short, long, short, long, and you play everything in that rhythm. Okay? Then you flip it and you play short, long, short, long, short, long, short. Then you can make it short, short, long. You put the long note on the third note instead of the second note. Then you can put it on the fourth note. So all the other notes are short. Now on the fifth note. Then on the sixth note. And then you try to play it for real. It helps it get under your fingers a lot easier. So you just move around the long note, one note at a time. Anytime I'm having a hard time learning a fast passage or a weird pattern, I take out my rhythms and do that very thing. I promise it'll help you learn it quicker. So I wanted to take a second to talk about something that brings me to number three, practicing 
playing in tune. How do you practice playing in tune? One thing that I have really discovered helps me a lot is to play things out of order. So if you're playing these six notes in the Don't Caprice, my notes are C, G, E flat, G, C, G. So these first six notes really are just three notes that alternate, C, G, and E flat. So I'll play those notes in different orders really slowly to get them in my ear from different perspectives. from a different angle or different perspective, it helps you learn really what those notes are supposed to sound like in relation to each other. And I think that's a big problem with intonation is often you just aren't 100% certain with how things are supposed to sound. So if you take the time to break it apart and deconstruct it and then put it back together, it makes a lot more sense. Another way to practice passage work and intonation brings me to number four, which is kind of common knowledge, but slow, Practice. Slow practice is everything. I learned this too late in life. Don't be like me. It's the hardest thing for a lot of people to do. Take a lot of patience. Try practicing 80 to 90% of what you're playing in your own practice time super slow. Use your metronome to start slow. That, that helped me because I always wanted to just play everything fast and be able to play it like now. But really I wasted so much time just trying and trying and trying and failing and failing and failing. So you wanna try to play things more times right than wrong for it to start to really sink in. And this really goes for everything you practice because it allows you to just take in all of these things that are going on at one time and be able to do them at once. We're just building up this awesome coordination of doing the dynamics having your technique be on point. Are you being musical? Are you playing in tune? I mean, I know there's so many things to think of, and if you go too fast, you're not giving yourself that opportunity to really check your list and make sure that everything's being taken care of. My teacher in high school told me to be careful with your notes. You have to be aware enough to be careful to play things right. If you're just plowing and going really fast through your practice time, then you're not giving yourself a chance to really be careful with your notes. Now you do have to practice things up to speed too, just to kind of test the waters and see how it's really going. So that's why I say to practice 80 to 90% of what you play really slow, under tempo, with a metronome. And then give it a go, see if you can do it. Sometimes I just wait till the end of my practice to really see if I can actually do it. And what I've learned is spending the time to practice slow actually gets me to my goal quicker than just trying to play it fast over and over and over again. So like I said earlier, there are lots of ways to practice effectively, but the last tip that I'm going to give you brings me to number five, is to practice in the mirror. A lot of people take this for granted. So it feels weird practicing in a mirror at first. I started playing when I was 12, so I actually feel lucky because I can remember what it was like to be a beginner. And I remember having to get used to playing looking in a mirror. And what it does is it helps you be your own teacher. So you can really see what's happening because from your perspective, especially if you're a violin or violist, you can't really tell what true straight is with your bow from this angle. So you really have to look in a mirror and see what's happening. And like, I can't see my arm from here. So I have to look in a mirror to see is my wrist poking out, is my arm straight. You can check in with all those technical things if you're able to look in a mirror. Also, practicing in a bathroom is so fun because it just echoes and echoes and echoes and you sound really good a lot of times. Sometimes not, but a lot of times you do. I always have a mirror in my practice session. Preferably a full length mirror so that you can even check out your posture if you're standing. I practice standing a lot. So practicing in a mirror really helps you make less mistakes because you can check in with your technique at any given moment. So I try to memorize a lot of what I'm playing. Honestly, if you're practicing enough, you should just memorize what you're playing naturally because you're playing it a lot. So that gives you an opportunity to look in a mirror and see how you're actually looking in this process of playing. Or you can videotape yourself like I'm doing now. In fact, I've been videotaping myself a lot lately, but I guess that would be point number six is to videotape yourself. Dang it. Maybe I'll make another video of, of more practice tips. There are a lot of them. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps support my channel and don't forget to subscribe. If you want more videos like this, please leave me a comment. I would be very curious to know what you guys want more of. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.